yes, it's good to be back in my chair. Now that I'm over that whole virus thing, I can get back to doing what I do best, sitting in front of the camera and talking about horror movies. And with the fifth entry in the Scream series coming to theaters this weekend, that's a good opportunity to go back to 1996 to talk about the first film in the franchise, Wes Craven's Scream. Pfft, well this series is going slow. It only took the Friday the 13th movies from 1980 to 1985 to get to part 5. But like how Halloween and Friday the 13th inspired numerous slasher films that came after it, Scream was such a colossal box office hit, not to mention gaining positive reviews from critics as well, that it also rejuvenated the genre and inspired many films and box covers that came after it. The movie comes from the mind of screenwriter Kevin Williamson, and it began life under the title of Scary Movie, which was later changed by Bob Weinstein. Because, I mean, that title has to be saved for something with significantly more small penis jokes. Williamson started the script as an 18-page treatment about a girl taunted over the phone by a serial killer, but then left to write the script for teaching Mrs. Tingle, and returned to finish Scream, which he based on his love of horror movies. Having a slasher movie revolve around the rules of surviving a slasher movie was a rather clever way to poke fun at certain tropes while still remaining a slasher movie and not going full slapstick parody like something like Student Bodies, a film which I love by the way. The script was such a hot commodity that it started a bidding war between various studios before ending up at Dimension Films, who talked to many directors such as Sam Raimi and Robert Rodriguez, who he himself would later direct another Williamson script with the faculty. After turning the movie down several times, Wes Craven, no stranger to iconic slasher films, signed on to direct after his involvement with The Haunting fell through and he would go on to direct the next three installments of the series as well. Look, you know this will be a good one because it's an hour and 51 minutes long. That must mean it'll get critical acclaim, or that it's happy birthday to me. Now let's get on with if it's a mid-late 90s horror movie I'm watching, it's gotta be Dimension. <laughs> Well, can't fault the title. It's got a scream in it. Whoa, we're getting to the iconic scenes fast. Mm, who are you trying to reach? What number is this? What number are you trying to reach? I'm really just here for Lloyd's out of context clip of the week. The new season has started. Yes, yes, we'll get to that, but we've got to get to this famous opening scene with Drew Barrymore as Casey. Even though she was originally the lead character, Sydney, but with scheduling conflicts and the fact that killing off a major star in the opening scene would make audiences feel like anyone could be killed, she played the much smaller role. I already know what's going on. The voice of Ghostface is Roger Jackson. Mojo Jojo is the killer. If only she were as obsessed with horror movies as the killer, she'd know that the smell of the Jiffy Pop is coming from inside the house. Yes, I watch a lot of horror movies. Oh, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's why she rented fun in Balloon Land. She only vaguely knows the classics. Mm, Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah. Ask the director. Unfortunately, the killer has been watching her the whole time. That's how he knows her phone matches her shirt and her hair. Back then, without caller ID, we had to keep answering the phone. It's rude not to, even if the caller is also rude. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish, understand? Still not as scary as fun in Balloon Land. This phone sex session is escalating fast. He has her boyfriend Steve, who is played by Kevin Patrick Walls, obviously a reference to his classic Steve character in The Corpse Had a Familiar Face. That's why she recognizes him. Personally, I hate it when I get crude phone calls forcing me to do bar trivia. <laughs> Name the killer in Halloween. No. The cop that hit Ben Tramer, duh. Wait, shit, that's Halloween too. Name the killer in Friday the 13th. <laughs> Trevor Morehouse, next question. Wait, wait, wrong again. In the first one, it was Roy the paramedic's mom. 
Sorry, Steve, you could have lived if it was Firestarter questions. Next, he asks her what door he's at. Unfortunately, she hasn't seen the classic don't open the door. But if we freeze frame it, I knew it, Sasquatch. Plus, the smell of burnt popcorn is even worse than death itself. This movie really gets the ball rolling fast. We get the first glimpse of the many, many serial killers in this franchise's universe. And it was then that it hit us in 96. Oh, it's only these scenes that she's in in the trailer. Yep, she's totally dead. At least it's a death scene that avoids spoilers when she takes off the mask. Finally, an opening scene for everyone who rooted against the babysitter and when a stranger calls. <laughs> There's more. Guess we should find out who the killer is. It's just me. That guy did it. Skeet Ulrich plays Billy Loomis, again, clearly named after the classic horror movie character, Deanie Loomis from Splendor in the Grass. But this is the cinema snob, so best I reference some of my own episodes, too. Like, oh, Billy was just sent there by her boyfriend, Dylan McDermott, to check on her. Ha, <laughs> I went with three to tango, and not the craft that had both of these actors in it. Enough movie references, though, we'll mix things up with the rating system. Now, well, two years ago, we started off hot and heavy. Nice, solid R rating on our way to an NC-17. Count yourself lucky. With slasher movies today, you're just stuck with a PG-13. Oh, no, I jinxed it. It is about to get PG-13. Would you settle for a PG-13 relationship? What's that? No bullshit! Licorice Pizza is still an R! But Casey's death is the top story in town. See? The name of the show is Top Story. It's all very sad, and since it's not a supernatural movie, her dead friend can't haunt her in a body bag like in Elm Street. Usually, this school is very comedic and wholesome, because holy shit, the principal is Fonzie from Lords of the Flatbush. And don't let this Scooby-Doo gang fool you either. Shaggy also did it. Plus, there's memorable character Randy, played by Jamie Kennedy. Hired for his knack for improv -ing. Seth Green also tried out for the role, and I think I would have just assumed that, even if I hadn't read that piece of trivia. They don't even need a horror expert, because in the fictitious town of Woodsboro, California, they always come home and watch whatever horror movie is on. We were discovered late last night by the girl's parents. The Woodsboro double murder case. Authorities are back. Sweet, they're showing final exam. Huh, I don't remember the part where they talk about my mom being murdered a year ago. Boy, this movie takes me back. I remember when the magic hour existed in movies. I never went outside much. I stayed in and rented stuff like these characters. I'm gonna swing by the video store. I was thinking Tom Cruise and all the right moves. No, goddammit, hello, magic hour, we're watching Top Gun. Though now it's Sydney's turn to get a phone call with a line that I'm sure every movie critic loved. They're all the same, some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. Hmm, you're right, I should do more episodes on Herschel Gordon Lewis movies. Look, we horror movie reviewers didn't have much to do before YouTube. We mostly just called random people and asked horror movie trivia. They will listen to our references. And I will shove in an old promo too, right before the commercial break. You're all invited to a centennial celebration. What they were celebrating wasn't important, and it sounded like a heap of fun until... 2,000 maniacs, crazed for carnage, started bathing an entire town in pulsing human blood. Now that we're back... What am I doing? Huh? Huh? Oops, sorry. Catch you at a bad time. Carry on with the phone call. If you hang up on me, you'll die just like your mother. Wow, way to make it awkward. We know she's gonna live. She's in a lot more scenes from the trailer that haven't been shown yet. Luckily, she's saved. I'm here to fool you into thinking I'm not one of the killers. <laughs> oh my god, there's two killers. And just in time for David Arquette's Deputy Dewey to deliver the jump scare. 
where they're going to take Billy to prison, where it's going to be very X-rated. As for the side characters, Dewey's sister is Tatum, played by Rose McGowan. One will die in this film, the other will go on to be the best damn character in the whole series. Gail Weathers is pretty good too, as Courtney Cox fought hard for the role to play a different kind of character than Monica on Friends. But at the police station, Sergeant Parker is gonna make for damn sure that no boyfriend suspect is gonna die in the jail cell this time. I mean, they should let him go. With the evidence they have, what, did he magically teleport outside the window? Quick, we need to get out of here before the place gets swarmed by more references. I'll send you a copy. Oh! Just like in the classic slasher movie, Die Hard. You can still tell this is an old movie. This was back when best friends had to sleep in twin beds for the slumber party. Crude phone calls were still okay, though. Hello, Sydney. No! She's not in the mood to answer your questions about Nail Gun Massacre. Only some guy in his basement watched that movie. The news is actually very helpful here. The all 24 hour Sydney Prescott channel tells us it was Liv Schreiber who killed her mom a year ago. The other networks just get consumed with cameos. So, how does it feel to be almost brutally butchered? Hey, hey, no, leave her alone. Holy shit, it's Damien! And the killer here may be iconic, but he's not very subtle. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there he is, just running around and shit. Anyway, I know you accused me of murder, but we're good, right? Understand what? A girlfriend who would rather accuse me of being a psychopathic killer than touch me? Well, it's that thing that weirdly gives her an orgasm. She's into odd shit. Like whatever the hell the principal is doing. Fairness would be to rip your insides out. Hang you from a tree so we can expose- What, is he gonna murder the delinquent students? Even if he did that, that wouldn't be the biggest wounds in the movie. Maybe she's a slut, just like her mother. You're evil. It's the words of the mean girls that cut the deepest. You know, for a killer that follows slasher movie rules, he sure likes trying to kill the final girl early on. This horror movie stuff is getting in the way of the romance film between Gale and Dewey. You look awfully young to be a police officer. I'm 25 years old. <laughs> I was 15 when I saw this in theaters, and now I'm 15 years older than Dewey. <laughs> Time is the real killer. Oh, to go back to my youth and go to school drunk. Kizu, kiss Kizu, is out. Darling, I don't know what you did. You're Lillarding again. I wish it would get back to the references. I'm a little tired today. It makes my job easier when the movie makes the references for me. Damn shits. Would you call me? Huh? Not your friend. See, that's Wes Craven playing his famous character Krug. Sorry, Principal, you had to die. Largely because the producers ordered this death scene because too much time went by without someone dying and it stops him from murdering more bratty students with scissors. You know what makes my job double easier? When they purposefully write in wrong references as a joke, like me! Duck other son. You're starting to sound like some West Carpenter flick or something. I refuse to believe anyone in this universe would make that mistake. If you know the first and last names of those two, you probably know the full names. Anyway, as they're watching, Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla at the video store. Way to ruin the stack of all the returned copies of Summer Catch. You're making it distracting when customers ask for a movie through trivia. What's that werewolf movie with E.T.'s mom in it? Um, Critters Attack, duh. If only the police were as amazing of investigators as Randy. If you were the only suspect in a senseless bloodbath, would you be standing in the horror section? Because I think those are the only movies that exist in this world. That and E.T. I mean, look, some of the E.T. cast members even live in this town. I don't think Randy cares. I think he just wants people to know he's seen Prom Night. If they watch Prom Night, they'd save time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula! Exactly. If it were Prom Night, that means we clearly need a sweet disco dancing sequence. It's the lack of dancing that throws Randy off when surrounded by the killers. 
He normally knows everything about every horror situation, which is why he knows he definitely won't die in the second film. Now can I please just rent my copy of Gore and be on my way? It is gonna be a night of partying, but after Stars Hollow closes down for the curfew, when Red Right Hand by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds begins to play, that's a sign they all have to go inside and watch Dumb and Dumber. Plus, they need to buy snacks to throw at the camera in case they want to make a 3D entry. I love that originally Ghostface was gonna have a white robe until they realized that looked a little clanny, as hilarious as it would have been to be like, oh shit, the clan's in the grocery store! With the curfew in place, the police know just what to do here. 90s the shit out of this mystery! And thus begins the giant party sequence, shot over 21 days and makes up the last 42 minutes of the movie. That's when you know it'll be a killer party. The news is even there to do an expose on beer bongs and if it'll numb you to jump scares. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. That's what everyone who makes a jump scare says. I'm not buying it anymore. Something tells me that Randy rents the same movies every party. Era train, prom night. How come Jamie Lee Curtis is in all of his movies? Also, why did you rent Perfect? Sadly, inviting the news reporter in is gonna put a damper on all their underage drinking. I'm kidding. These students are all about the same age as Gail. Now we have to wonder, will Tatum die or will it be another jump scare? I don't think there's been a cat one yet. <laughs> Relax, Kitty. Lloyd's 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week will be here in a few. Oh yeah, and she's definitely gonna die too. Get one last reference in. Cute. What movie is this from? I spit on your garage. You make an I spit on your grave joke, but you mix up horror directors? Enough horror movies. She's gonna adventure movie this scenario. Whoa, whoa, oh, never mind. She would make a terrible Indiana Jones. Indy would easily make it under that garage. <laughs> She'll be fine. They'll just turn her torso into a giant machine gun. And worse yet, the alcohol is getting to Randy. Now he's just throwing around references with no rhyme or reason. What's Leatherface doing here? Leatherface was known for his dashing good looks and hot high school girlfriends, and was always there to comfort them about their dead moms. It's like Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs when she keeps having flashbacks. Stop letting Randy feed you pickup lines. God, this movie uses more jokes in bed than I do. Why can't I be a Meg Ryan movie? <laughs> or even a good porno. What? I found an E.T. costume at the video store. Grab the camera, we're making a porno. And no, no, this party has it all wrong. If you're having a drunken horror movie party, you watch Halloween 2 or 3. Plus, with Randy here, it takes like five hours to watch one movie. He pauses it every five minutes to go over the rules. Yes, yes, we know. In slasher movies, you can't drink or do drugs, have sex, never talk about Fight Club, and don't look in the basement. Oof, Gail is finding out the hard way that watching them watch a movie isn't nearly as fun if there isn't two talking robots. Plus, they get to the most important rule of all. Hello? Yeah? Every horror movie gets more suspenseful when you add the Halloween theme. But sorry, bro, your love scene is still very much a PG-13. However, Gale and Dewey's chemistry is a full NC-17. <laughs> and those drunk teenagers are about to kill more people than the killer. Ooh, that was fun. Wish this was When Will I Be Loved, though. That's the one with the nudity. What? She's still interrogating him? You fool. You know that trying to find out if he's the killer is something he likes during foreplay. Otherwise, he gets weirdly intense before being fake stabbed. <laughs> It was then she put it together that, wait, he's in the theater department, he's totally acting, he's the killer. 
You know, I spent a lot of years not caring for this movie, but over time, I've definitely warmed up to it. When I saw it in theaters, I liked it fine, even if my classmates loved it more than I did. They'd come in saying, It was the scariest movie ever made! Okay, I didn't think it was scary, but I don't know how scary it's supposed to be, since it's definitely very comedic. It was a lot of the knockoff movies that came after it that really made me sour on it for a while, by kind of taking that out on Scream, which isn't fair. The movie still does a lot of things right. While a lot of modern slashers struggle with being stuck with a PG-13 and making their characters insufferable assholes, this movie has cool K and B effects, and importantly, the characters are very likable, with over-the-top and memorable performances all throughout, not to mention an instantly iconic slasher villain. But enough about Scream, we're really here for Lloyd. And now it's time for Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week, the Season 3 Premiere Edition! We got you on camera, bitch! Oh my god, I'm so glad it's back! Okay, we have returned, and what the hell is going on here? Is he watching the movie again? He must have been really disappointed in Death of a Centerfold, and just decided to watch Halloween again. Sadly, no one ever gives love to the news cameramen in these movies. They always die. I can't mourn him now, though, because I have more questions. What is with this copy of Halloween that is taking a long time to get through? It's gotta go slowly so the soundtrack can line up perfectly with the actions of Scream. And a lot of them will be totally fine anyway. Gale will be fine. Dewey will be fine, thankfully. They shot one version where he died and one where he lived. And rightfully so, the test audiences said, Screw you, we love Dewey, keep him in! There are pretty good sequences in this climax. I like when the killer has the keys and keeps fucking with her by trying to unlock the car. Also, when she doesn't know which one to shoot. Sydney, Sydney, shoot both of them. They are both a nuisance in your life. If you kill them, you can watch your horror movies in peace with no one pausing it to explain the rules or drinking and making lewd comments. Or at least shoot him in the he'll be okay for the sequel spot. Whoa, wait, what? Billy's the killer? We all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> hey, that's from Psycho. Anthony Perkins, Psycho. I know. This is serious, damn it. Corn syrup. Same stuff they use for pig's blood and carry. Oh, do movies have fake blood? Wait, and Stu is the killer too? And he's got a voice box? Just like the killer from Scream. You're all so Lillarding again, and getting very erotic. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> That was after their plan A was to watch Follow That Bird and make a fortune off of kidnapping a giant singing bird. Here's where we get to the motive, where at first he explains they have no motive. That woman was a slut bag whore who flashed her shit all over town like she was Sharon Stone or something. Your mother was no Sharon Stone. Other than they seem to be a little obsessed with Sharon Stone. Oh, and also he has a motive now. His dad banged her mom and they want to frame her dad for these murders. I don't think they've been watching a lot of slasher movies. I think they've been watching a lot of Lifetime movies. I do remember being surprised by the two-killer reveal when I first saw the movie. That felt kind of newish at the time. And also loving this scene where they have to stab each other. Only one accidentally stabs the other too deep and he begins dying. Oops, idiots. However, there's still 15 minutes of the movie left. The rules say that they still have a little bit more time before they die. Plenty of time to knock someone unconscious. Works better without the safety on. Also, neck crack, just like the killer from Hellraiser Judgment. Sadly, their plan starts to fall apart. Between Stu slowly dying, someone sitting on the remote and rewinding Halloween again, and that the police aren't really gonna buy that he's a giant killer turkey. Just like in Blood Freak. And the worst part is... <laughs> Randy can't finish Halloween. He's never actually seen the end because he keeps pausing it to talk about trivia. Like if you have a villain line and you pose like this... Say hello to your mother. Stop! 
You're gonna get shot. And the next bullet is for you, Randy, if you don't stop. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life. Not in my movie. But that literally just happened. Now get them to the hospital stat. We only have one year till Scream 2 is released. So yeah, the movie is fun, but it's not perfect. It goes a bit overboard with some of the references, winks at the camera a little too hard sometimes, and kind of holds your hand through its satire and explains the joke a lot. But pff, who am I to talk? It's still entertaining seeing a slasher movie take place inside a world where slasher movies exist and everyone knows their cliches. Between some memorable deaths, a good climax, and solid characters, the movie was not only a box office hit, but was such a hit with critics and audiences that it breathed some life into the dying slasher genre, and for better or worse, inspired a lot of movies that came after. But even with those being hit or miss, Scream has definitely earned its place as a respectable horror movie series. Hell, these characters come across more random killers than Jessica Fletcher. And that ends my review for Scream. And as the rules stipulate, here is the part where I end the video by showing a clip from the movie and cutting to the end title. Just like my reviews for Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Look! Here comes the obligatory tit shot. Thank you.